Welcome all together. Thank you for organizing this event and I'm very surprised about the high uh, number of participants. Uh, thank you for the for GSL to inviting us and also for Brunel University. I would like to focus a little bit on another very important component in the refrigeration circle and uh, we say always the heart of the refrigeration circle, the compressor. So I would like also to focus on, on CO2 um, with the different product lines, subcritical and transcritical. In, in general, we have um, yeah, a philosophy in, in, the, um, in the GEA group um, that we uh, committed to natural refrigerants. Um, of course, they are coming very uh, big numbers from the um, industry applications, so where they use ammonia and, and CO2 already for a long time, but also from, from, from Bock, from the commercial side, we already have transcritical compressors since the beginning of the 90s. So, this is a gen general um, yeah, responsibility um, to um, have economic um, use and uh, resources and energies. Uh, we use one of the first compressor manufacturers where we have um, uh, frequency converters, for example, to save energy. So, and of course, we also um, have the, um, always the task to have high quality, to have um, a high um, long lifetime for the compressors and all our components we manufacture. In the presentation today, I would like to focus on the CO2 products. So this is uh, split in, in our company in two different uh, product lines. Uh, one is the subcritical compressors for low temperature applications, for low temperature cooling. Um, and the transcritical CO2 compressors for medium temperature, so when we have a system where we, ha where we need a gas cooler, for example, then we need also this uh, transcritical compressors. From the product lines, the overview, we can see here um, the, the program in the overview, we have the complete product range for subcritical, for low temperature compressors, uh, low temperature applications from two cylinders up to uh, bigger four cylinders. And we have also a complete product line for transcritical compressors, starts with also with two cylinders and go up to the first six cylinder, transcritical six cylinder in, in the market. The subcritical compressors look, when you, when you know the Bock products, look very similar to our standard uh, products from outside, um, but it is completely a different uh, design inside. The only thing what you can see outside is the, the pressure relief valves also, the pressure relief valves uh, for low temperature and um, um, high, high um, discharge gas uh, to relieve the gas to the atmosphere. This is an important point for, for CO2, different to other refrigerants. Um, and also the operating conditions, of course, are completely different with CO2 and the compressors are completely designed for CO2 in subcritical uh, applications. You can see the operating limits are extended in the last years from, from lower condensing temperatures, 5 degree to 15 degree. Uh, this is the reason also to have more operating conditions, more applications covered. Um, and also we have also increased the um, evaporating temperature from minus 25 to minus 15. Um, also a step we um, bring the compressors on the same line like the transcritical compressors. So the discharge charge gas is in uh, CO2 normally higher than compared to synthetic refrigerants. Um, so we have also increased the discharge temperature on the pressure uh, pipe uh, to 160 uh, bar. To have also here a range with more application possibilities. Uh, also when you have, for example, a glycol system uh, where you have already um, temperature between uh, 5, 10 degree, you can uh, use a, only a subcritical compressor to, to uh, cool the, uh, the low temperature applications. Um, very important when we consider CO2, we, we have to consider not only the operating conditions because the, um, the problem with CO2 is that we have in standstill normally a higher pressure than in the operating conditions. Uh, much higher pressure could be. So it is very important to, to look on the uh, design pressure of the compressors on low temperature and high uh, and, and discharge uh, pressure side. So the, the complete product range for subcritical compressors is um, designed for 40 bar on the, on the suction side. This is important when we consider the system and the design of the system in the standstill situation. 
The high pressure side is designed for 55 bar. And uh, this is already uh, possible for the complete range, but with the uh, operating limits, we will publish uh, or we will release the bigger compressors already uh, this year and the following in the next month. From the product range, it is important for CO2 to consider also the, um, yeah, the special uh, properties of CO2 because what we can see when we use our standard range for synthetic refrigerants, the minimum or uh, the minimum uh, swap volume um, displacement for this compressor is a 60 ccm compressor. This is here we have with CO2 um, very high cooling capacity. This is related to the to the uh, reason that CO2 have a very high volumetric efficiency. Um, so we have extended the product range to smaller compressors. So we have new in the product uh, 20 ccm compressors to reach also smaller capacities with these compressors. When we translate this in a, in a cooling capacity, to give you a, a better um, idea about that, uh, when we consider minus 35 degree um, evaporating temperature, then we have a range from 2 kilowatt around to 80 kilowatt or 85 kilowatt uh, with the biggest compressor at 50 hertz. Of course, always possible to have racks with more than, more than one compressor. From the transcritical side, it is a little bit more a challenge, of course. We will see uh, there are other pressure levels for the design. So there's also a complete product range available from the two cylinders. The newer generation since uh, four years, three years in the market, the four cylinders. And since uh, last year, we have also released this uh, six cylinder version up to 30 cubic meters <coughs> per hour. Um, the reason we had in the beginning, we started uh, very often with air cooled uh, compressors. That means we cool the electrical motor with a fan. This is a little bit changed the situation in the market because um, with the compressor, with the gas-cooled compressors, what we can see also in the new generation, um, we cool the electrical motor, so the, the, the waste energy from the electrical motor. We want to bring in the gas, in the discharge gas, for heat recovery, because heat recovery is a very important topic. Um, for In supermarkets, for example, you can use this, uh, the heat recovery for the complete heating of the market. Maybe we'll, we'll hear also from um, later on from, from Danfoss a little bit more about this. So this is a very good option with CO2 and therefore we need only gas-cooled compressors because we don't want to blow the uh, waste energy, uh, the electrical uh, waste energy from the electrical motor in the machine room. We want to use it for heat recovery on the high pressure side. The focus when we develop CO2 transcritical compressors is of course uh, four major points. Um, of course, when we talk about CO2, we hear always the high pressure levels. It's, therefore, it is very important to consider the safety issue. Of course, the efficiency, I would like to mention, uh, point it out later on. Um, durability is a must-have, of course. Um, and, of course, later when the system is installed, operating and service for the compressors is also a very important point. I would like to highlight some, some important points uh, for the transcritical compressors. Um, the design of transcritical compressor is 100 bar on the suction side, 150 bar on the high pressure side. So here you can see the difference to a standard compressor where we talk about 28 bar. Um, this is also important, of course, for us for designing the compressor because here we have to consider also the burst pressure. This is three times of this pressure. So we have to test the compressors also for higher pressure to have a safety, higher safety level. We have the highest COP with the new generation, with the four and the six cylinder in, in the market compared to our competitors. Um, I can also focus on it later on. We have all the compressors equipped with oil pump. That means also subcritical and transcritical compressor. This is uh, very important for the next step because all the compressors have the possibility for variable speed. That means in a standard range, we have 25 to 70 hertz. For supermarket application, it is also very interesting for lower um, evaporating temperatures. To, we can go down with the oil pump to 20 hertz. 
So this is a very important topic. I will focus on this also later on uh, to have the part load situation because this is always the challenging situation for CO2 also to cover part load situation in winter time, for example. Um, nevertheless, when we use the oil pump, important is that we have a low oil carryover because that can lead to a lot of troubles in the system, can reduce the efficiency of the system. So the oil carryover in the system is also very low, also when we have higher uh, frequency to increase the efficiency and the availability of the system. Um, we have, of course, a complete optimized drive gear in the complete compressor. So we use here, for example, piston rods of, from, with steel, not with aluminum. We have hardened pistons, we have special uh, bearings inside, so these are all optimized for the higher pressure differentials in, in with CO2 and for this special transcritical compressors with the high uh, pressure design. Also we have designed this compressor for, compressor for different applications, so we have different compressor versions for different um, applications. I will explain this a little bit more in details now. Um, of course, to find the limits for compressor, it is very important to find these limits before you deliver compressors to, before we deliver the compressors to our customers. So we do very extreme tests in our lab to f to find uh, the situation. Maybe where are the weak points for the compressor? So we long-term um, extreme tests with the compressor. This is a situation that shouldn't happen in the, in, the, in the field, but it is very good to find uh, in the compressors the, the weak points. Um, so we do also, we have the possibility to have uh, different test benches where we can do performance tests. Um, it's also possible for certificated performance tests um, to, f to have the performance data for the compressor later in the calculation programs and in the product information of the compressors. For the operating limits, we have split the compressor in two different uh, compressor versions. We have one compressor uh, operating limits with a limited high pressure um, and limited uh, evaporating temperature. This is very often used, the ML version, in supermarket applications as a second or third, fourth compressor. Um, here we have, of course, reduced power um, consumption and a reduced, uh, um, reduced uh, limited uh, max current. This is important uh, when we design the complete system, the electrical box, for example. It is um, charged with a special Easter oil for CO2. This is very important in this case. Then we have also a, um, um, a compressor uh, version with a stronger motor inside. The stronger motor inside gives us the possibility for frequency control up to 70 hertz. And we have also the possibility to go with the compressor to higher discharge pressure and to higher evaporating temperatures. And last but not least, for special applications with higher evaporating temperatures, this CRE area here, um, we have also a designed, uh, a, yeah, we call it a heat pump compressor, uh, where we, when we have pressure over 40 bar, um, we have here in this compressor also a strong motor inside but we have also another oil with another base viscosity of the oil to uh, challenge the, uh, to handle this uh, challenge of the oil and refrigeration uh, situation at higher evaporating temperatures. When we consider the, the capacity and the efficiency of the compressor, then it's of course important to, when we do an installation, how can we save um, energy, how can we save money in the end? And when we compare this to a big competitor for us, we have in the calculation point of a typical supermarket around uh, a COP of, of close to 10% better. For the um, operating conditions, normally we run the system, of course, the most time in subcritical operating conditions. So we also, it's interesting, what is the situation at lower condensing temperatures, at 15 degree, for example, here, then we are still uh, close to 8% uh, better and also for the heat pump it is a little bit less but it is still interesting around 4% better with this special designed compressor for CO2 applications, transcritical CO2 applications 
um, and special design for this uh, properties of CO2. When we have a booster system like we could see in, in Simon's presentation before, then normally we have yeah, two different temperature levels in a supermarket, for example. We have a low temperature application uh, where we normally have one or up to four or five compressors. Um, very often, of course, it is very important for CO2 to have the, the frequency control compressor or one of the compressors uh, to have also considered the uh, situation of the part load in winter time, night time, for example. There we have the possibility for subcritical compressors 25 to, 30, to 70 hertz or 30 to 70 hertz with the two cylinders. Then we have two compressors where we have the switch on, switch off. And then we have in the, in the medium or on the high pressure side, we have the transcritical compressors. The transcritical compressors always responsible for medium temperature and for the condensing um, capacity of the subcritical uh, compressors. So also here, very important to have frequency controlled compressor because we have to handle also the situation when we have only load on the low temperature side. We need also this medium temperature compressors here. So also when we have a very low load here on the, on the low temperature side, we have to, uh, to handle this also with the transcritical compressors. And therefore, it is very important to have a minimum frequency, a minimum load on the compressor. Also here, the same situation. We have the other um, compressors on the rack where we can switch on, switch off. From the energy flow, of course, we bring the energy into the compressor. Uh, we have the load from the low temperature side, and then we have the condensing, uh, con condensing capacity on where we go in the booster system directly to the transcritical compressors. And we have, of course, here then the input from the capacity, uh, from the cooling capacity side, we have the input from the condensing temperatures, uh, con uh, from the low temperature compressors, the condensing uh, capacity, and plus the medium temperature, what we need for the medium um, application. Then we have also, of course, the, the power consumption for the compressors, and then we are going out here with the condensing or the gas cooler capacity where we can use for heat recovery or where we can use in the gas cooler, in the soil gas cooler uh, to uh, bring it out to the area. Very important is when we consider only one compressor with the possibility from 20 to 70 hertz, we have a, a range from 10% of the calculation point to 140%. When we have a rack with several compressors with the same uh, size, then we have a stepless capacity control in the compressor, and we have always still the 10% part load situation possibility with 20 hertz, and we have also a little bit more capacity for very hot days for extreme conditions of 110% of the capacity. This is a very big advantage when we can run the compressor to 20 hertz, and this is also the reason when we have other compressors, for example, with only minimum uh, frequency of 30 hertz, then we have with the 20 hertz some big advantages. Uh, we have a better compressor adjustment to, to capacity demand. We have, of course, a reduced start-stop situation for the compressors, particularly in winter time when we have part load. This increase or bring us a higher reliability of the frequency controlled compressor, so less start-stops. Um, and, of course, with a frequency control system, we can save energy and we can increase the, um, the uh, evaporating temperature um, on the evaporator side, so we can also increase the complete efficiency of the complete system. On the other side, of course, there is an option to have 87 hertz, um, to have more capacity uh, with the frequency controlled compressor, but we think, we recommend always to use more the, 20, uh, the 70 hertz combined with the 20 hertz. Then we have still a, a frequency range of 50 hertz for the second and the third compressor. Um, because what we can see with the 87 hertz, that we can save more or less only energy when we are running a compressor until 50 hertz. We need for a 78 hertz compressor uh, another electrical motor, so we need a 230 volt motor and the 
400 volt motor is a more efficient compressor, particularly in the uh, in the main compressor, so in the lead compressor, in the frequency controlled compressor. This is the compressor which is normally running the longest time. So we need no special electrical motor. We can reduce the noise level at 70 hertz compared to 87 hertz. We have a reduced oil carryover, which can lead to big problems in the system, can lead to problems in the compressor when the oil is coming back. And we have still the capacity range from 20 to 70 hertz. These are 50, 50 hertz for the compressor. And we have the 50 hertz for the second compressor without any capacity steps between the first and the second compressor. Only to give you an overview about the range of, of the transcritical compressors, we start with the smaller capacities with the two cylinders. We have then a wide range of seven uh, version for four cylinder compressor and we have additional four uh, capacity steps uh, with, a six, with the six cylinder machine. Um, translated in cooling capacity for medium temperature application, it start at 12 kilowatt goes up with 40 kilowatt with the four cylinder and, and end in 60 kilowatt with the uh, six cylinder machine. <coughs> all the compressors you can find uh, for calculation and all the um, product information, technical data of the compressor you can find on our uh, uh, homepage uh, where you can find also the links, links to the to the, uh, to the uh, different um, selection softwares. This is, one is the online version where you can install on the, on the computer, and the other one is the offline version where you can also use uh, when you are traveling, when you are, uh, want to check the compressors on the mobile phone, it is possible. Um, so these are the two different versions we have available on the market. The advantage of the offline version is always up to date. We have always the um, up-to-date data and technical data in this uh, version. Only some examples. Uh, I have picked out only some examples from, from different applications, what we can see with CO2. One is, of course, the, the biggest market, and I think it's more than 90% of the installations are in supermarket uh, at the moment. Um, this is an example in Switzerland from the company NX. It's an Italian uh, company from Italy. Uh, where we have the four-cylinder machines for the medium temperature and for low temperature the subcritical two cylinders. Um, another application which is interesting is heat pump application when we have uh, when we need uh, in different applications uh, high water temperature then we can use such heat pumps with uh, also um, the reciprocating compressors or with a screw compressor here for example from um, Gia Crasso from our colleagues. Um, this is uh, some examples which are interesting for bigger industry applications. Also another um, application is uh, frozen storage, also freezer storage, uh, where we have in the food industry a big demand when we have medium uh, sized systems. So when ammoniac is not so interesting, then it is also possible to do this with a, um, with a booster system on low temperature side, the subcritical, and on the high pressure side, the transcritical. Here, a system in, in, in Germany from, from company Advance or Denmark. Yeah, this was my short presentation about the compressors. Um, when there are any questions, uh, please feel free. <laughs>